Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about medium vessel vasculitis. Vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessels, resulting in damaged vessels, which can lead to potential complications such as organ ischemia, as well as aneurysms. Primary vasculitides are classified into the size of the blood vessels affected. Large vessel vasculitis, medium vessel vasculitis, and small vessel vasculitis. The medium vessel vasculitis includes polyarthritis nodosa and Kawasaki disease. Polyarthritis nodosa is a rare systemic necrotizing vasculitis targeting medium-sized arteries. Polyarthritis nodosa has distinct features with particular involvement of the renal and visceral arteries. It is associated with hepatitis B uh, virus mononeuritis multiplex, and renal infarction. There is no involvement of the lungs, eosinophils are usually normal, and there is absence of anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. The pathology of polyarthritis nodosa is characterized by focal and segmental transmural necrotizing inflammation, which is essentially inflammation on all the layers of the blood vessel, a panarthritis. The exact etiology is unknown, but possibly infection, and because of its association with hepatitis B virus, this could be the potential trigger. From whatever antigen, an antigen-presenting cell can activate T cells, which will in turn stimulate the immune response. In polyarthritis nodosa, likely the cell-mediated immune response is stimulated, which involve the macrophages and the neutrophils. In the acute phase of the disease, neutrophils infiltrate all layers of the blood vessels, causing damage to the surrounding tissue. Macrophages will then move in to clean up the area. Repairment of the vessel wall begins. There, there's platelet plug formation as well as fibrin deposition. Collagen gets deposited as the vessel is repaired. The segment of blood vessels here become fibrosed. This area is now termed fibrinoid necrosis, which is a special histopathological term seen uh, in blood vessel necrosis. And this is where segmental transmural necrotizing uh, inflammation comes in. There is necrosis uh, of the blood vessel in segments. Fibrinoid necrosis include dead cells and dead immune cells, collagen, proteins, and fibrin. The vessel is now not as strong. Aneurysms can occur. Aneurysms are dilatations of up to one centimeter in size along the involved arteries. And this is characteristic of polyarthritis nodosa. At a macroscopic view, blood vessels look like beads on a string. Polyarthritis nodosa commonly involves bifurcation and branching of the arteries. During the healing process, lumen narrowing can occur thanks to a number of factors, thrombosis and fibrin deposition, collagen deposition, and hypertrophy of the smooth muscle layers. The association with hepatitis B virus is because patients with hepatitis B can often present with polyarthritis nodosa. So what is the clinical features of polyarthritis nodosa? Clinical features of polyarthritis nodosa are nonspecific symptoms such as fevers, myalgia, weight loss, and a rash. Nervous system involvement is common with peripheral neuropathy and mononeuritis multiplex being the most common. Mononeuritis multiplex, also called multiple mononeuropathy, refers to an anatomical pattern of peripheral neuropathy that affects two or more uh, different nerves, basically. It's thought to be due to inflammation and occlusion of the vasa nervorum, the blood vessel that actually supplies the nerves. Another feature of polyarthritis nodosa is the involvement of the renal artery, which can lead to renal infarction. And this is just due to inflammation of the blood vessel. Also, the renal artery involved can lead to hypertension, secondary to uh, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system being activated. Important to mention that the risk of 
cardiovascular morbidity and mortality is high in polyarthritis nodosa and requires close monitoring. The rash in polyarthritis nodosa can be numerous things, including a purpuric rash, subcutaneous nodules, bullous vesicular lesions, and levido reticularis. There is also GI involvement characterized by non-specific abdominal pain in up to 50% of cases. The investigations to order for someone suspected of polyarthritis nodosa includes a viral hepatitis serology, full blood count and EUCs, electrolyte urea creatinine, to check renal function. Diagnosis of uh, polyarthritis nodosa is through a biopsy, but in the absence of an easily accessible tissue for biopsy, the arteriographic demonstration of involved vessels, particularly in the form of aneurysms of the small and medium-sized arteries in the renal, hepatic, and visceral vasculature, is sufficient to make the diagnosis. Here's an image of an angiogram showing the renal artery supply. Note the small aneurysms uh, throughout the medium-sized vessels. The classic polyarthritis nodosa should be treated with a combination of steroids, glucocorticoids, and cyclophosphamide. The treatment of hepatitis B virus-associated polyarthritis nodosa involves a different approach. Prognosis of untreated patients is poor and mainly due to gastrointestinal complications and cardiovascular complications mentioned earlier. Important to know about another condition called cutaneous polyarthritis nodosa. Whereas classic systemic polyarthritis nodosa commonly affects you know, the kidneys, muscles, nerves, and GI tract, as well as the skin, vasculitis in, the, in cutaneous polyarthritis nodosa is skin limited. The other type of medium-sized vasculitis is Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease is an uncommon systemic vasculitis disease affecting mainly children under the age of 5. Kawasaki disease is a medium-sized vasculitis. Kawasaki disease and hinox shonlan purpura are the most common primary vascular disease in children. It is more prevalent in Asians and native Pacific Islanders, and is a leading cause of childhood acquired heart disease in developed countries, which include coronary aneurysms. The exact cause of Kawasaki disease is unknown, but clinical and epidemiological data support an infectious cause. In Kawasaki disease, an intense inflammatory cell response develops in a wide array of organs and tissues in medium-sized arteries such as the coronary arteries. The pathophysiology of Kawasaki involves monocytes, IgA antibodies, neutrophils in the acute setting, and cytotoxic T cells. These guys all play a role in the inflammation of the medium sized vessel. What is thought to drive this temporary vasculitis is an infection. Theories include uh, Staphylococcus and Streptococcus species, such as from strep throat, and even a viral infection. Antigen-presenting cells will pick up these antigens and mount an inflammatory response. The inflammatory response somehow misdirects the attack and will attack the medium-sized vessels temporarily, and this includes the coronary arteries. This response can damage collagen and damage elastic fibers in the vessel walls and can lead to loss of their normal structural integrity. Despite the repair that occurs, the disrupted structural integrity results in ballooning or aneurysm formation. The clinical features of Kawasaki is usually a child less than 5 years old with high fevers for more than 5 days and irritability. Some classic findings in Kawasaki can be remembered with the abbreviation CREAM. C is for conjunctivitis, bilateral, non purulent R is for rash, polymorphous or maculopapular rash.
E is for erythema and or edema of the hands or feet. A is for adenopathy, lymphadenopathy, specifically in the cervical uh, chains. And M is for mucous membrane changes, which include red tongue, strawberry tongue, and dry, cracked lips. The diagnosis of Kawasaki is made if the child has four of the five following letters in cream, as well as having a fever for more than five days. For children who present with a purpura or a particular rash with fever, the differential is broad. A good start is to divide differentials into thrombocytopenia um, and non-thrombocytopenia-induced rash. But some important differential diagnosis that to remember include measles, where there is evidence of exudative conjunctivitis, coplic spots and rash, which tend to occur in the head and migrate to the trunk. Drug reaction is an important differential, which leads to a generalized rash eruption all over the body, usually itchy. And another important feature is the angioedema, which is swelling. Infections is a fundamental differential and includes streptococcus infections. And remember, infections are associated with the development of Kawasaki. So for example, streptococcus pharyngitis. And streptococcus pharyngitis can then also lead to scarlet fever. Streptococcus pharyngitis can also lead to rheumatic fever, an autoimmune response to the streptococcus infection. Another differential are the staphylococcus infections, which typically include the skin and is also associated with the development of Kawasaki disease. Staphylococcus infection differentials include Staphylococcus scalloped skin syndrome, which is characterized by red blistering skin that looks like a burn. Another is toxic shock syndrome, which is caused by the release of bacterial toxins from the Staphylococcus species and is associated with tampon use. Another important differentials and also potentially the trigger for Kawasaki are viral infections, which can also manifest as a macular papular rash. Finally, a very life-threatening differential is Steven Johnson syndrome. Investigations to order include a full blood count to look for signs of infection, EUCs for kidney involvement, LFTs to look for viral causes affecting the liver, CRP and ESR, which are inflammatory markers, uh, these should be high in Kawasaki, as well as in infections. Urinalysis is good to look for evidence of white, uh, you know, increase in white cell count. Finally, it is suggested that an echocardiogram should be performed once the diagnosis of Kawasaki disease is made, as well as 6 to 10 weeks after to check for myocardial inflammation and coronary artery aneurysm formation. Remember, the main complication of Kawasaki disease is coronary artery aneurysms, but it is not uncommon for aneurysms to occur anywhere along the branches of the aorta. Once diagnosis of Kawasaki is made, it is essential that a pediatrician is involved. Admit the child and commence immunoglobulin uh, intravenously as well as aspirin. Commencing intravenous immunoglobulin within 10 days of fever onset has shown to reduce cardiac complications. The complications of Kawasaki are mainly cardiovascular and include coronary artery aneurysms as well as artery aneurysms anywhere else, myocardial infarction, pericarditis, and myositis. Thank you for watching. That concludes the video on medium-sized vessel vasculitis.